Hello, my name is Nicole. I'm a Metro educator. I will also be your host on this virtual tour. I bet you're wondering, who's Metro? Metro is a regional government here in the Portland area. We serve 1.6 million people across three counties. We build policy, we help cities with their planning, we manage a variety of parks and venues, and we also manage the region's trash. During this tour, we'll be highlighting the journey of trash. We will show you the path trash takes once it leaves your home to when it is processed and prepared at a transfer station to either be recycled, reused, or sent to a landfill. In addition, we'll introduce you to all the folks who contribute to this system to ensure that our communities are healthy and clean for everyone. Our tour will be hosted at Metro Central Transfer Station. Metro Central is one of two Metro-owned sites that handles the trash for the Tri-County region. The site is located where the Willamette and Columbia Rivers merge. This area has been the home for a thousand years to the Multnomah, Clathamut, Tualatin, Kalapoya, Chinook Band, Clackamas, and Malala tribes for many, many generations. Now, before we start our on-site tour, it's important that we're safe during the tour. So what does that mean? Well, we need to wear PPE. What's PPE? PPE is personal protective equipment. So today, all we need is a helmet, neon vest, and glasses. Well, it looks like we're about ready, aren't we? I do have one last question. Can you think of another community worker who might wear PPE? Can you name one? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. A construction worker or even a doctor might be someone who would wear PPE during their work. Good job. All right, I almost forgot. Before we head on the tour, we need to be on a lookout. So what are we looking for? Well, our neighbor, of course, Ron the raccoon. Ron is a resident here at Metro Central and he likes to stop by on our tours to make sure everyone is having a good time. So keep count whenever you see Ron and we'll find out how many times he visits at the end of our tour. You all ready? Let's get started. Imagine it, you help your family member take the trash out to your dumpster or curb. And then what happens next? Your trash gets picked up by someone we call a hauler. They are the garbage trucks that we often see coming and going from our neighborhoods on a specific day every week. The hauler then takes the trash to a transfer station, which is where we are today. A transfer station is a large space that holds and processes trash, food waste, and recyclables temporarily until it is ready to go to its final destination. So let's begin at the entrance of Metro Central. The hauler arrives with their load at the front gate of our station and gets weighed. Why do you think it gets weighed? That's right, we use weight as a way to measure how much trash is being dropped off from vehicles. We get their weight on their way in and get their weight on the way out. They are charged a small fee based on how much was unloaded during their visit. Now, for these specific haulers, they head over to an area called Bay 3. This area is designated for hauling companies who pick up your waste from your home or the waste from small businesses. This area sees a lot of activity. Our region's trash is constantly moving. In fact, haulers will arrive as early as 2 a.m. to drop off their collected garbage. Can you think of other community workers that work at night? That's right, building custodians and nurses are great examples. Once haulers dump their garbage, large machinery such as front loaders are pushing the trash into a nearby compactor so that it can be compacted into a smaller and tighter load. But what about folks who don't use haulers or those who just have unwanted materials? For instance, maybe you did some cleaning last weekend with your family member and you have a pile of trash you're not sure what to do with. Well, just like the haulers you just saw, 
Community members are welcome to drop off their garbage at a metro transfer station. They come in through the same entrance, get weighed, and are able to drop off their materials here in Bay 2, our public bay. When you look around, you'll notice a lot of people working hard to manage your trash safely. We have spotters making sure folks are moving their vehicles carefully through the space. You may even notice that we have folks up high on that platform. What do you think they're doing up there? Those individuals are part of our sorting line. They are recovering materials that can be recycled so they don't go to the landfill. As for the tractor operator, they help to place trash on the belt so that it can run through the sorting line before it gets compacted. We have folks monitoring for asbestos and other hazardous waste. Certain items such as motor oil, paint, and medical syringes should never go into our trash. They can instead be dropped off at our on-site household hazardous waste facility where it can be disposed of safely by our experts. As you can see, with so many people handling our trash, it is super important that we, as community members, dispose our trash correctly and safely to protect those workers. A lot of trash visits Metro daily. In fact, how much trash do you think 1.6 million people make in the metro region on a daily basis? Just between our two public transfer stations, we handle close to 4 million pounds of trash per day. Wow, that's like 333 African elephants worth of trash per day. That's a lot of elephants. With so much trash coming through, we do our best to recover as much materials as we can. In addition to our sorting line, we have an area where we collect recyclables from community members. Recycling is one action we can take to keep things from going to the landfill. But recycling still requires a lot of energy and resources to process. Can you think of other actions we can take beyond recycling to help out our planet? Practices such as reusing, repairing, and resisting are a few things we can do to help make less trash. And these small actions help to conserve natural resources and fight climate change. That's not all. You can do something similar with your food waste. When you think about trash, how much of it do you think is food? Take a guess. On average, between 20 and 30% of our household trash is food. When food ends up in the trash, it rots and releases methane gas, which contributes to climate change. However, in the metro region, many local cities are able to keep food waste out of the trash. Haulers collect separated food scraps and yard debris from home and restaurants and take them to one of our transfer stations. Eventually, those items are sent to a special facility to be churned into compost or energy. But we want to make sure food goes to people and doesn't get wasted in the first place. How do we do that? Well, simple practices such as planning our meals, storing our food right, are easy actions that we can take in our home to get the most out of our food. Once haulers and community members unload their trash, they stop by a scale house, get weighed, and charge for what they dropped off. It's that simple. Well, we're getting towards the end of our tour, but there are some workers at our facility that we haven't talked about yet. These workers are very quiet in their work and can reach an average speed of 100 miles per hour. Who are they? Are they cheetahs? Meet our falconry team. This team is made up of a few specially trained hawks and falcons that visit our site to help manage the nearby critters. Falconry is the art of training birds of prey to hunt in cooperation with a human. It is a career built from hours of training 
and the curiosity to get to know another species very well. The birds you see today stop seagulls and crows from scavenging contaminated food and scattering trash around the station. Keep up the good work, feathered friends. This is our last stop. As we saw earlier, the trash gets compacted, placed on a semi-truck, and sent to a staging area for eventual transport to our landfill. Do you know where our landfill is located? Our landfill is located 140 miles east through the gorge in a place called Arlington. There, the trash gets buried and monitoring is done for 30 years. Transfer stations play an important role in a community's waste management system. They serve as the link between a community's garbage collection program, such as haulers, and a final waste disposal facility, like our landfill. Well, that's the end of our journey. Thank you so much for joining us. I truly hope, after this tour, that you have a better understanding on how we manage the region's trash and that you are able to see all the people that contribute to the system to ensure that our communities stay healthy and clean for everyone. Take care.